Hello and welcome to the latest in the Institute of Health and Social Care's 20 minute social series. We've had a really diverse range of people as I guess so far. Today we've got one of the crowning glories. We've got our own Helen Dyer who's a member of the Institute and she's also a member of the UK Caldecott Guardian Council and the Caldecott Guardian in her own right. We've also got Jane Brightsman here, our General Manager for Social Care, because I'm sure there's an angle on social care that we'll want to cover as well. But hello, Helen. How are you? Hello, I'm grand and delighted to be here. Thank you ever so much for having me. Grand and delighted. That's fabulous, isn't it? Well, look, let's start at the very beginning. Can you, I, I, can you tell us what a Caldecott Guardian is, first of all? So a Caldecott Guardian is a wise person. Um, no doubt, Helen, no doubt, we can tell <laughs> that, yeah, you passed. So they're a senior person within an organisation that helps uh, protect the confidentiality of a patient or citizen or even staff information as it's used in that organisation and shared with others. Fantastic. Well, I, I thought it was important to do that first because some people listening in or watching might not actually know what a Caldecott Guardian was. So that, that's very helpful. How did you first get involved? So I was working uh, outside the NHS um, for a, a private company that was processing an awful lot of patient data on behalf of the NHS under contract. And that contract said uh, you must appoint a Caldecott Guardian. So I was a, a senior lead nurse um, and I was the most senior clinician in the organisation at that time. And the organisation interpreted the guidance as meaning that it had to be a clinician, which isn't always the case. Um, and said, it did, you're it, off you go and be a Caldecott Guardian. So I just turned around and said, what on earth is a Caldecott Guardian? Excellent. OK, so they picked you, presumably for your sparkling intellect and wisdom as you've already pointed out and good looks and good looks no doubt yeah and the uniform wouldn't have done any harm either i bet so once you'd once you'd been appointed i mean where did you go to learn really what the role involved how, how did you go about training accessing training and such like so it started with google as all good journeys seem to these days um and uh, uh, from there, I managed to access some private training uh, that was being provided and the tutor on it was uh, a, a gentleman who was prominent in the UK Council of Caldecott Guardians and I was just hooked straight away. Uh, the ability to start thinking about ethics and decision making and leadership and uh, all the elements that are within the role of being a Caldecott Guardian, the opportunity was fabulous. And as part of that, um, there was an invite to come and observe a UK Caldecott Guardian Council meeting, um, which I did, and I've missed very few since. Um, only these days when I uh, attend, I do a little more than listen. I, I contribute from time to time, not, not terribly often, but uh, offer experience as a habit. Excellent. Well, look, I think maybe it's something the Institute might look at in terms of providing some training for members around uh, data protection issues and Caldecott Guardian principles and so on. Look, there are there are eight Caldecott principles. Uh -huh. I'm going to go through them all now, by the way, or test you on them, Helen. That's Thank you. People are perfectly <laughs> capable of looking them up in their own time. But we've also got the Data Protection Act 2018 around GDPR and so on. And it strikes me that that's, that's a lot of guidance and principle and legislation all built around this topic of data and access and confidentiality. And it strikes me that, you know, as we move into the world of integrated care systems, where actually that has the potential for data to be spread even more widely than was previously the case. How do we make it easy for people who work in health and social care and have to access data, how do you make it easy for them to understand the basics of what they can and can't do? Because the danger is 
we overcomplicate it and people just turn off and go, oh, I just can't be bothered. I'm just going to use my common sense. And I guess that's the whole reason why the principles are there, to make it more simple and to make it uh, easier. But, but it's constantly a challenge. Yes, we've got the Data Protection Act and then we've got the common law duty of confidentiality. And then there's a whole raft of legal framework um, sitting alongside that as well. Um, and I've heard people say, well, which one is the most important? Which one should we follow? But you've got to follow them all. And that is a really difficult path to tread. Um, so, and, and if I may, the, the danger therein is that it's so difficult a path to tread that people don't tread it. Actually, yeah, they, absolutely. actually um, they, they think they can't do their job because so, of their fear over what might happen if they take a wrong step. So you talked about there being eight principles. When they first came out in 97, there were only six. Um, and it wasn't until later uh, that uh, the seventh principle, which is about the duty to share information being as important as the duty to um, protect confidentiality, uh, that, um, that recognised that because there was too much. It was safer to say, no, I'm not telling you. Um, yeah, exactly. So well, I'm looking at, I hope you don't mind here, I have got a tiny crib sheet of my own here. You know, principle four, access to confidential information should be on a strict needs to know basis. But it's difficult, I mean, it's just difficult to fathom if you're using the data or you need to use the data. It's kind of difficult to fathom how you would justify that if you were challenged. And I'm not, I'm not pretending that this, this should be made even simpler. I'm just saying, I do sort of understand why people have difficulties Absolutely. And, and fear the legislation and the Caldicott guardianships as much as admire them and regard them as a protection mechanism. Which, which is why the Caldicott Guardian's there to help support and advise the organisation to have the right processes in place and guidance in place for the types of information that they are handling. To, to be able to support the, the staff um, and, and those people who are working every day with that information to be able to access it and share it safely, but still maintain and build public trust in, in our ability to handle. This is, this is um, I mean, you talked about we've got so much legislation because it's such an important area um it goes right back to the human rights act uh, you know you write to private and family life for example so in, in terms of um making sure and putting those standards in place the, the collicott guardian has a, a key role in terms of advising the organization yeah i'm just taking it from what you were saying there i'm just taking to you know what nhs what nhs x did at the beginning of the COVID pandemic when Matthew Gould, I think, wrote to every trust saying, look, don't worry about GDPR. Let's just get on with making sure that we can access the data when people are going to be working from home, working remotely, working in di difficult circumstances. You know, he sort of gave permission effectively not to ride roughshod over the GDPR um, legislation, but actually to, to just relax everybody enough to say the important thing is that we we can access the data safely yes so what he did was he is, uh, there's been an issue of a copy notice that, that allows um further safe processing um, there we go well i'm going to bring in jane if i may um to just talk because i'm jane this this business of integrated care this business of the the arrival of social care in a formal way into the planning of health and social care. I mean, there must be issues here around uh, how data is now used and how patients and service access people's uh, data is provided. Absolutely. And, and I think probably it's fair to say in social care that, that many providers, managers, aren't over the Caldercott principles and they're not aware of their requirements 
um, to have a Caldecott guardian. And I'm really interested in, in what you think, Helen, and, and what would you say to a care provider who hasn't really considered this at this stage? What would, what would be your kind of first steps for them? What action should they take? I, I think um, that there are some really successful models out there in terms of, of how it's been implemented. The first steps would be to look at your organisation and, and the types of data that you're um, processing, accessing, needing to access, uh, and then look at the, the extra value that can be added by having a Caldecott Guardian in terms of being able to smooth um, information flows, to build that trust in your organisation and the reputation of your organisation, reducing, um, you know, reducing problems and another source of advice. And it will depend very much on the size of the organisation and the type um, of information. One size doesn't fit everybody in terms of Caldecott Guardian models. And it might be that a group of organisations want to um, join together. It's important that the Caldecott Guardian still can access the information that, it need, that they need to be able to advise. So they mustn't be so remote that they're not useful. But um, there's no reason why a, a group of organisations can't team and pool resource to either have a Caldecott Guardian externally or from within their own um, clinical or uh, operational team. How, can tell me, Helen, have the has the council considered how it will interact with integrated care systems? Um, yes, there's been quite a bit of work. Uh, undertaken and again that's through the Caldecott guardians that are involved in in those systems and they're there for advice all the time if needed got you okay help us understand um what are the sources of support or information and training for people so you know we're going to have people watching this or listening in as a podcast and they're thinking okay i run a a small, large, medium-sized operation, whatever it might be, I need to kind of gen up on this. Where do they go for information? Well, they've timed it just right because, of course, the new guidance that's come out is being supported by a whole raft of new work from the UK Caldecott Guardian Council. And currently in development are some uh, free e-learning modules uh, that will be released hopefully um, this year. Uh, fairly soon in fact I know there I, I, I hope it's this year you know yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah I'm always wary about making promises oh, um, and, and, and also I'm not privy to their absolute timetable okay so you heard it here first I'll be ready I know to that they're drafted <laughs> I know that they're drafted um, and they'll uh, they'll certainly um, come out and they're aimed across the whole range from board members to Caldecott guardians themselves to everybody that works with uh, sensitive data as, as, as patient data. So, um, so can we access those through the UK Caldecott Guardian Council? Is that the idea? No, they'll be hopefully accessed via Health Education England and e-learning for health. Um, so I don't again I don't know the full details it's still in the planning stage but the council are keen that everybody should have access um, all right well I do hope I mean perhaps you could send back to the council please pull your fingers out UK called the council of Britain because <laughs> the world ain't gonna wait you know uh, we need we yeah. need this information the ICSs are already formed they're already active. There's already a huge amount of terrific work being done across health and social care where integration is taking place. You know, I think this is urgent, really, about where's the guidance for how we use data. Yeah, so this new guidance has been prompted. Uh, the, the guidance that I'm talking about is um, the guidance that was released from the National Data Guardians Office. Um, so that's the, the prompt for the training. Uh, the, the systems relating to supporting ICSs I'm less familiar with I'm sorry okay well if you would wouldn't Terrible. mind taking back our message yeah, yeah. to your fellow anyway. council members perhaps they could invite Jane Brightman to come and address them that would be rather good so well Jane has an invite too they I know I know I know it's, it's very exciting Jane what would you say if you if you could get in front of the 
Caulicott Guardian Council now, what do you think you might say to them? First off, I'll be buying a new frog, but what I will be saying to them is we know that particularly in social care, we know that, you know, we are a bit behind on this and we need a lot of support. We know that it's part of the um, data protect uh, security and protection toolkit. And we know that it's now in CQC's line of sight. So we know that, you know, it's in the Chloe's and the care providers are going to be expected to be doing something. And we really need that extra support to, to bring them up to speed and support them to, to do that. And um, I, I know um, for a fact that the uh, manual for Caldicott Guardians is being revised in light of the new guidance uh, that, that specifically relates to social care organisations as well. Um, and there have also been a series of um, network events put on. There's also a forum available uh, through digital health networks that Caldicott Guardians can join uh, and seek support from uh, on any subject that they like, uh, well, obviously Caldicott related, <laughs> but, but certainly in terms of if, if they're looking for training support, they can enter the forums as well. All right. I, I always start to slightly shake with trepidation when I hear words like manuals are being updated because you think, oh, you know, it's going to be an absolute doorstop document, you know, filled no, with... No, no. It... Please say it's not, Ellen. It's not. It's an easy read document. It really is. It, I, I can't help but recommend it, um, seeing as I, I, I had the odd part in it. And my picture's in it as well, so it, oh. it, obviously it's fabulous. It should be flying um, off the shelf already. <laughs> well, look, I'm, it's I'm been gonna... around a few years and it's just being updated. So. I'm going to take the opportunity now to turn into my genie. Um, okay. I'm going to turn into a genie because I want to, this is a new, a new development within our 20 minute social. So I'm going to, I'm going to don the genie. <laughs> there we are. You. And I've also got, I've got the genie lamp. So you can give that a rub, Helen. I'm going to grant you three wishes <laughs> around Caldicott guardians and data protection principles. Off you go. Oh gosh. Um, I think the, oh, does it have to be entirely about Caldicott Guardians and Data? All right, I'll grant you. I'll grant you one at least that's outside of the. Okay, uh, so my one outside would be uh, that the internet was entirely reliable and didn't interrupt communications just when you get to the best bits. Um, Shazam! It is that, done. Okay, so my. You'll never be cut off again, Helen. I promise. Thank you. Uh, uh, my second is. That um, Caldicott Guardians should feel empowered and able and confident to be able to fulfil their role. Um, and that there was enough. Oh, does this count as two or one? Oh, uh, that, well, I'll tell you what, hang on. So was, I've okay. given you the second one. That's done. They will all be super confident. They will all develop, develop backbones of titanium. They're going to be able to do it. All right. Last one. There was enough resource there to be able to support them to do that. Um, Just and, up. and it shall be so. There you go. I better take this off before it affects my already far too long hair that I'm waiting to be cut when we're finally allowed to. Well, look, that was jolly. I hope you all enjoyed that at home. Thank you, Jane, for your insights. And we look forward to you going along to the UK Caldicott Guardian Council in your new posh frock. Helen, you make sure you look after when she gets there, please. I've got to say thank you to you, Helen. It, I think it's brought home to everybody watching what Caldicott Guardians are and why they're useful and important. And we much value uh, your advice in that regard. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right, I'm going to cut it there, everybody. Thanks for listening in. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.